Hi, uh, I'm Nidal. I come from uh, Western Digital and um, I work for the CTO group and we're doing researches over the RISC V and especially the code size. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about the code size because uh, for embedded system where we aim our research, we do consider the code size as an important aspect in developing a, a product, especially for uh, small footprint uh, devices and MCUs, where uh, actually we will uh, talk about the problem itself, how we address it, the research solutions, and what we're planning for the next year. When it comes to code size in small footprint uh, pro products or MCUs, the RAM is the most expensive uh, resource and we always struggle to not consume it, not consume a text area and keep the code smaller. So we took a glance at the Risk v and we saw one of the obvious things that it doesn't provide uh, multiple operation uh, instructions. Like one instruction that can perform multiple operation on the core. Beside that, the Risk v on the GCC and LLVM compiler were behind a 10 to 20% of other uh, ISAs. So we started uh, looking at uh, benchmarks. We took the beeps, we took the uh, my bench. We tried to figure out how can we uh, improve the code size, the code, uh, the code density, and reduce the code size. We found out that the risk five is uh, a few percent only behind the other uh, ISA, and we were happy and, hey, we have uh, a lot of time to spare. Maybe we go to the beach. So when we started uh, packing up our uh, swimsuit, it hit us. We were looking at the wrong angle of the problem. We were looking at benchmarks, which is derived for performance and not MCUs, not uh, embedded systems where the algorithmic test cases, benchmarks, try to address the performance. And nowadays, MCUs are more controlling devices more than calculating and computing. We use it to control a flash memory. We use it to control drivers like Bluetooth or other things. So. What we did before when trying to use the benchmarks, the regular benchmarks, was not that accurate. So what we did, we took one of WD real projects, real embedded projects, and we imported it to the RISC-V target. We built the, risk the real project in uh, risk five target and the one of the legacy vendors uh, controllers and then we inspected the assembly and tried to uh, see where we are we fell behind in the code size we found a few uh, weak spots we have main two uh, two main uh, weak spots maybe this is not a weak spot, this is by definition. The ISA didn't, didn't the ISA instruction set didn't give us much, uh, much uh, features, okay? It was limited, so we didn't want to jump in and change the instruction set, adding uh, instructions. We wanted first to go and check the compiler maturity and to address problems there and try to improve it. So we won't touch any ISA limitation. We will keep it as it. 
but we will improve the compiler. So we went into investigating the GCC first, the compiler itself, tested the optimizations. We tested functions that gave a larger, much larger code size in the RISC-V than the legacy vendor. And we started putting up solutions. First of all, we found uh, one thing in the GCC where the RISC-V, uh, GCC for RISC-V injected the save restore prelog epilog functions. And we, can, we, could, we, see, we saw that we could eliminate a few of them that weren't needed, such as a tail call. When I have a current function that I'm in right now, and I have my callee, which called me, but I will call another function, which is the last operation in the current function. So I'm calling bar, okay? But the return is the final stage in the current function. I will move to um, pseudocode that represent how the assembly should be or how the low level should look like. When you see that calling foo, foo will save the return address for itself to use it to call bar, then restore it. But since I don't have any operation after calling bar, I could simply just call bar without having to save in the current function the return address and just return from bar to the caller function. Another thing that we, we saw that uh, in the RISC-V over GCC, that when we have a stream of memory access, if it's uh, multiple stores or multiple loads, the compiler did get, got to that address with large offsets. It didn't do any manipulation. It just jumped from address to another in large uh, uh, offsets and used non-compressed instructions, 32-bit instructions. So we thought about rebasing the address where we can get closer to the address we want, then jump in small offsets. Jumping in small offsets will give us uh, the opportunity to use compressed instructions. And by doing that, in the same stream, in the same function of the load and stores, we, could, we saved actually up to 10% in code size. Here is how we did it. We have a memory access to register A4, where we wanted to load a some value there. We saw that we have two non-compressed instructions. While we aim to have one non-compressed instruction with only compressed instruction for the load. But to do that, we had to use another instruction with another non-compressed instruction. So there's a penalty that we must pay in four bytes to do that, to be able to rebase. So to compensate over the non-compressed instruction that we had to add, we came up with this solution that we will need to calculate the amount of, of the loads and stores to see where we break even and where we can actually save uh, code size. So we break even when we have two stores or, or two loads, where we can add the rebase instruction. Then we will have two loads or two compressed 
loads or stores. So from three uh, store loads, we can actually start saving code density, code size. And we can get up to 50% in the same stream. Here's an example of a real stream that we uh, tested and we had 10% saving in the same uh, memory access. Going forward, this was all what we've done and all what we've worked uh, on in the last year. Now we will go and do the same research over the LLVM, try to save uh, code size, try to improve the code density. We will be providing a outlining optimization, but only for the LLVM compiler. We will do more density test cases, same as we did with the GCC, where, where we took real a project code and turned it into test cases. And we will be also adding it to the mbench uh, benchmark. The outlining will be taking static stream code, similar code that we can identify in the final uh, target and try to make the compiler identify it as similar code so it can generate some kind of function like and extract it so we won't have duplicate and this will help us a lot in code size. As I talked before about the code size measurement, we will continue driving a test codes, we will continue uh, investigating this matter, this aspect, because we still don't see enough benchmarks that will give a code size measurements, exact code size measurements. They're all performance uh, test, case, test cases. Uh, Drystone, Cormark, for example, there are all a performance uh, benchmarks. We will contribute our tests to the mbench, which is a FOSI benchmark. It's open source. You can check it, you can contribute to, to it. We have our own uh, GitHub test case, but soon we will merge it with the mbench and will be we will be contributing to it. And the final results that we have in the past year, you can see in the blue line where we use the GCC 8.2 to build our product and the orange is the patches that we added. You can see along the way, we have about 5% of code uh, density improvement. I think that's it. Thank you guys, and I'm free for questions. Sorry. Performance. Yeah, we we're focused on uh, code size, uh, not on performance. <laughs> the measurements on on the performance. No, we didn't do uh, that. We're focus. Uh, we're focusing on st uh, code size only. Uh, no, we didn't uh, do anything like that. 
repeat the question, please. Uh, yeah, he was asking about the global port, uh, pointer, about positioning the global pointer. We actually didn't, uh, uh, we didn't look into that. We looked into uh, cases that we had from a real code where the GCC and the LLVM fell behind uh, other uh, instruction set and uh, commercial compilers that we have for other instruction set. And we try to compensate in uh, defining new optimizations and defining new ways to make the compiler do better work. Did you hear the question or shall, shall I? Yeah. He's asking about uh, outlining, uh, if we did implement it or not. Well, no, it's the ongoing on the, uh, you know, on the future plans. We will be uh, implementing it for the LLVM compiler. Jeremy. I've got an update for you. Is the patch has been submitted. We got an update. The patch has been submitted. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Does it feel like you're getting, you've already got all the low hanging fruit, or would you expect the code to continue to get smaller over the next couple of years? Uh, sorry, uh, okay. yeah. Well, well, you could gain 5% this last year. Do you expect it to keep getting I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping to do that, <laughs> or else I'll lose my job. <laughs> you think there's plenty of targets to make better over the next couple of years? Yes, we believe so. We believe uh, that we can uh, keep and uh, uh, do a better job for uh, decreasing the code size. I think one of the things that can attack is that we need a lot of Yeah, uh, well, the comment here is about uh, interprocedural uh, optimization. Well, this is also uh, one of the aspects that we're uh, investigating. But uh, as a start, we wanted to see the maturity of the uh, GCC and LVM and uh, open source uh, compilers. So we started with the uh, simpler things and moved on to the more complex uh, things. Yeah, it's uh, on our plans. <laughs>